this mining, like at the base of it, it's all corrupt. The agreement was, was not in favor of the people in this island. I remember that our caretaker prime minister last week, he was saying, if there was no mining, all this should not happen. I was here during the cyclone Oma, and uh, yes, uh, it's bad weather. Vessel to uh, grounded there is, is questionable because the other ship is doing loading, loading up to more than three days just after cyclone, they leave. And um, there's a lot of assumptions and a lot of ideas, a lot of questions. Second day, I bought a vessel and I see the dining room with uh, many beers open, all the food is not completed. Are you using cocaine or you using drug? What kind of a drug are you using? You sleep, sleep and your mind is lost or? So the ship is now leaked now and the oil is spilled out now and it's very dangerous here now. All the area here, you know the oil now are just like tar everywhere. You see the stone, the whatever here, the beaches. My question him like this. What happened to the captain and all officers on board? They are there in the camp here, belongs to the BMC. So they stay there for a week and we still don't know what, what happened to the steamboat, why that steamboat uh, was shot there. And they celebrated the Chinese New Year. So to me, myself, I said, those people are terror, they are terrorists. How I see it. They have been paid by different organizations to wreck that ship or to cause the problem to our community here. We can see, you know, the damages we can see in our naked eyes. There's no scientific study. We don't need scientific studies, but we can see it clearly. The damages, you know, the environment is really damaged. They are cleaning up the oil. What about the mineral along the shore, in the sea, down in the beach? Day by day, washed out by the sea water. There's dirty along this bay. So who can help us to clean up that? And we don't know will take how many months or how many years now. Before they confirm the area is back to normal. We don't know. This is a result of a decision making from the high level. The then government of Solomon Island and the then provincial government approves the corn company and the this is just the symptoms of it. They say bauxite is a chemical that, that gives disease to people. They spoil a plant. They also, if they take it out and they spread it along, maybe we breathe the air, there is chemical out from the dust. Even the agreement was just two pieces of paper and then that's the, that's the mining agreement here in Reno. But during our whole lifetime in here, we never used those garden because no one can produce it because of this bauxite. So whatever damage is him, him, him happened over here, uh, if you can say no, him just because of our desperation, we invite those companies to come. Look at it closely, like the government really, they don't care about who lives in this island. They just, 
They just want to get the money, have that operation going on, and then have the money, that's all. They would mine the whole West China. A few people, we always talk, you know, advise, we always talk about how, you know, conservation program, how can the government help those people preserving this small forest. Because of the activities uh, right on the uh, coastline, or the insole fish which there is totally affected. The small fish, the corals, the spawning area, all these places. There are a lot of bad, bad things that bauxite will have on the corals, especially corals. Fish, fish will find it hard because the water is quite turbid. So the longer this mining they stay here, there will be a lot of things will be extinct. Uh, we suggest that the mining should be stopped so that we have to clean up here and uh, there's no disturbance. In 2016, I went down to the log pond. They used to take gravel, uh, mineral to the to the, the batch, and I saw a, a, a dead turtle just laying there, and I took a photo and I put it on Facebook. So I'm one of the suffered one with the scratching body. <laughs> Seven months with this one. Really thick this from the box side? Yes, the box side. Another one here. Okay, the last one. 25 years. That's the agreement that the, the, the appeared uh, Asian Pacific uh, something uh, apid. They are the one they will operate in that place for 25 years, and that that, will be the, that was the agreement. And they will stay for 25. So now it's maybe four years now, and you can see the, the destruction is very challenging. But we, so we have 21 more years to go. I don't know how old these people. Logging was more new industry to the island and the procedures of how to obtain the approval from appropriate authorities were very new and normally people underestimate the hearing to make objection and they will say oh because it is introduced by a, a person who has no money and all this stuff they were they didn't realize that some giant will behind the introductory of, the, of that industry. So, Politepai is one of the landowners who did consent his land. And the fact here is he didn't, he didn't like the agreement. He has been, he has been uh, owing money from the company, like 100,000 SBD or Solomon Dollar. I mean, they hire their security to just kill him to death. Led by the name Buddy. They hired him, they watch him all the, throughout and watch him, they watch him for about a month. So they follow him in their car. They just follow him, follow him as they go. But it's 12 o'clock, so he went off the car and went to the Kingsley restaurant to have a lunch. While he sits on the table to have his lunch, one guy from the, the security group, or one guy that has been hired by the Sambing Sambi, or the mining company, came in and just cut him by the neck. So he's just like, uh, uh, like defending himself. 
He defended himself so the knife just get through his left hand. Uh, during the time of the attack, uh, the, the man who did the attack says that you are the one that, that uh, misled the people of Reno, not giving up their land and because of your poll statement. And he just walked out, get in the car and escape. So from that moment on, the landowners here began to, they are afraid of being disobeying the company. So whatever agreement they give, they just follow. Yeah. Because they come in with legal documents. All has been legalized by the government of Southern Islands. We've encountered a very tough situation in which one cannot explain by him or herself. It's got to be a community thing and it's, it, it's reflect back down to respect and, uh, and a tribal will. Because if you don't have any respect, then who cares? Anybody can stand up and say, hey, I am here, and then go along with the company's thing. And then we are not realizing for what reality we're supposed to have. And this company doesn't care. Who cares about you? Ideas to people, like, oh, really, our environment is, is damaged by these activities. This is what we should have if we don't have this mining activity, we don't have logging, we don't have mining. We can still rely on these, these, these reefs. They give us food, they sustain life. I mean, so marine protected areas really helpful, not only for humans, but the marine environment. It brings back the diversity that environment was once had, and people rely on it for food. This is what our wish is because it was introduced through the help of this, uh, the name World Heritage. It's uh, helped us to preserve. My only hope is education. We just need a good human resource, like population wise. Because uh, we have been talking about getting independent. So I see a big picture of um, beyond this such situation with the oil spill. We can prepare this place to be um, a very famous world uh, tourism destination. Yeah, it's a very good thing if Renault people really want to have, have back their, their destroyed environment, marine environment bike in the time where you don't have any logging, you don't have any mining, and people rely on the reef for their daily lives. We need our freedom to be restored, because freedom gives us peace, love, harmony, unity. All this come together when we have the freedom.